Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 15th of September. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And today we have a lot of very interesting topics to discuss. First I will try to analyze the numbers that we received from the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. Very short. Uh, the Russians are saying that as a result of previous day attacks, previous 24 hours attacks in Nikolai Kherson district, the Ukrainians lost up to 500 soldiers and 40 armored vehicles. If you remember, yesterday the Russians attacked Kivoy Roh, this town on the north of Nikolai of Zaporozhye area. They attacked this town, they destroyed the dam, and a lot of water moved in this direction. And today uh, the Russians are saying that that was the first day since the beginning maybe of this special operation when the Ukrainians didn't do even attack even anything in this area and the Russians are saying that mainly that was um, connected to this situation with this dam and the river of the and the level of the river if you take a look at this map you're gonna see that there are a lot of icons uh, the Russians are storming this area and I repeat myself 500 soldiers were killed during the previous 24 hours in this area by the Russians now the important update they're coming from Kharkiv area. The Russians are saying that during the previous hours they managed to destroy 30 soldiers of special forces in this area and 10 armored vehicles. And another important update are coming from Donbass Ark operation from Sporne area. And the Russians attacked the 10th mountain assault brigade and they lost around 80 soldiers and 30 armored vehicles. And mainly there are heavy clashes around town by the name of Sporne, this one. Uh, today we saw a video of Su-44 who was dropping the bombs in this area. So there are very heavy clashes and the Russians are penetrating this area or trying, at least trying to do this. Furthermore, if you take a look at this map, you're going to see that the Russian source map has been updated and they returned control over town by the name of Belogorovka. The front line near Liman has been stabilized. The only update that the Russians reported that today they attack area near Shurva. That means that this town is under Ukrainian control. We are talking about other front lines. As you can see, Donetsk is under heavy shelling. The Ukrainians still try to do something, do some recurring combats. Uh, if we are talking about the most important front line between Vasilivka and Gulaipolia and Kurakhova, the front line is stable. Uh, we can say that it's silence before the storm. So I believe that soon the Ukrainians will start anything in this area. But all these updates is the regular routine in this area. Nothing changes like we uh, our conversation our discussion about this station was almost the same a month ago first the report of Ministry of Defense then about some progress and so on and so on and this is a very suitable nice situation for the Russians because they don't need anything they're in the fun state they need to complete and to fix all the issues in economy with the army with mobilization with everything the time works for them. If we're talking about the Ukrainians, they've lost already the Zaporozhye power plant. They've lost the power plant in Kharkiv. Yes, they returned territory in the north of Kharkiv, but uh, some, some people are saying that they still haven't entered every single town that the Russians left because they don't have enough of power, time and manpower to do this. So that's why we are talking that Ukrainians are planning to start counter-offensive operation. But the question is how long this situation is going to be? How long the Russians are planning to be in defense state? One year, two year, ten year, maybe forever. Maybe they're planning to freeze this conflict. Maybe they're not going to do anything or develop the situation and they will stay in this position reducing the Ukrainians by day, day by day, soldier by soldier. It's a very important question. And yesterday we got an answer to this question. And today I would like to discuss with you one of the most important update that happened this autumn. Even not the Council of Fence Operation in Kharkiv area. That was very important what we discussed this situation. And now I hope you understand the real situation with Kharkiv, with Russian regrouping and their defense state on the south. Today I would like to discuss with you the yesterday update about Wagner forces. Wagner is a PMC, private military company. 
if we're talking about Donbass Arc operation, you, we can find these Wagners on Bakhmut front line in this area. Wagners is those guys who took control over Popasna. Wagners is those guys who took control over Svetlodarsk over this area. Wagners is those guys who are storming Kadema and trying to crack the south from Bakhmut. Wagners is the guys who is storming today, this night, these seconds, these hours, Solidar and Bakhmut, these towns. This is the private company. And what is the update about? You can, you may ask me. Uh, maybe some of you saw this video, maybe not, I will describe you. Yesterday, uh, the head of this PMC, the, na the name of this, uh, of the head of, P of PMC Wagner is Prigozhin. And yesterday he visited the Russian prison. It was a very short video, a few minutes, but it was very interesting. And uh, he was talking with the prisoners about the opportunities in the special military operation in Ukraine. It was a very terrible Russian prison. There was thousands of prisoners. There, there, was, a, there was a big square. Those prisoners were sitting, staying in this square. And in the middle of this group of these thousands of prisoners, there was a small square, empty square, where this head of PMC was standing, Prigozhin, and he was talking. He was, uh, he was walking from one corner to another, and he talked, and he talked a lot, and those prisoners were listening to him. What was he talking about? He was talking about the opportunities in Ukraine and special military operation. And he told them that if you join the special military operation, the Russian Federation will reduce your prisoner term. If you are able to stand in Ukraine for six months, around six months, half a year, you will be totally free. You will be totally free, no more prison terms, and you will be able to return back home. That what he was talking about. He was talking about Wagner very short. He told about the main main goals and main principles, the philosophy of the Wagner forces. He told that the Wagners have some certain rules. And the first one no retreat, no desertion. And he told that if you see that you encircled or and you want to retreat, for these purposes in Wagner you are given for two grenades and if you join our family he was talking about our instructors will tell you what to do with two, these two grenades if you will be encircled the second point in their philosophy was that if they're on some territory they're not robbing anybody they're not stealing anything from the locals. This is the second rule of the Wagners he was talking about to these prisoners, to the murderers, to the killers, to some bastards and scums in this town, in, in this area, in this prison. And the third rule he was talking about is that they're not raping civilians on the territory they're occupying. This was the main three things that he was talking about with them trying to give them some understanding of where where are they maybe what kind of structure maybe they are planning to join there was one thing he promised to everybody of them to these killers rapers and these thieves and these murderers he promised them that he would return every one of them back home dead or alive that was his first promise and the second promise of this president of Wagner was that everybody, every single warrior, every single part of man of this big family of Wagner will be buried on the valley of the heroes of any town they want on the territory of Russian Federation. Just imagine yourself, a murderer, a raper, would be buried on the valley with the heroes who was, let's say, who was fighting with the Nazi German in 1940, in 1940s. So that what was he was promising him. The only one thing you need to survive up to six months on the territory of Ukraine, and then you will be able to go home, 
or if you want you want you can stay and join this Wagner family I'm not sure if you understand what is Russian prisons. I'm not sure you know about this. For, let, to tell the truth, I don't know anything about the Russian prisons. Just a thing from movies and the books and something like this. But as I understand, it's a very terrible thing. And I believe that a lot of these prisoners thought and think, still thinks that this is a very tasty contract. Just to stay on the territory of Ukraine up to six months and they, they will be free. If we're talking about the prison where this president of Wagner visited yesterday, he wasn't in the prisoner, prison where these people who has one year a prison term. No, he was in the prison where uh, the terms are around 10 or 15 years. So he was in the prison where the people is already dead. Because some people are saying that if he got into Russian jail and if you have like a prison term more than more than 10 years, something around 15 years, there is a very high risk that you won't be able to return from this prison. Or if you return, you will, will be a totally different person. So for most of them, this is a very tasty solution, very tasty solution, very tasty contract. And I try to analyze the situation, I try to understand about the numbers, what is the real numbers. So we can understand, we can imagine that Prigozhin is the sale manager and he has a very nice product, the freedom for the prisoners. And the only price that the customer need to pay for this freedom is his life, is his appearance on the territory of Ukraine. Maybe it's too much, maybe it's not, but I believe this is a very tasty contract for those who should be in the prison for more than 10 or 15 years. For them it's the second choice. And even if they will be killed, they will be buried on the valley of the heroes of the town they decide where they will be buried. Very interesting situation, by the way. So I did some more analysis, I tried to find some tables trying to understand how, mu how many prisoners on the territory of the Russian Federation. I found some fresh numbers like of 2019 and they're almost the same, almost the same and according to the uh, information I have, so the, there are around f more than 400 thousands of prisoners in Russian Federation. But if we are talking about 400,000 of prisoners, of course, it's nothing. Of course, we understand that if the Russians are able to recruit 400,000 army, uh, I believe that as soon as they complete the trainings, there would be no Ukraine anymore. But we understand that not all of them are going to join the Russian PMC Wagner. Of course, we understand that. So that's why I ask myself how to understand where is, who is the potential soldiers. And the answer was in the same video when uh, uh, there was like a comment that this, this Wagner, this um, Prigozhin visited the prison where uh, was the prisoners who has prison terms from 10 years. So it's a very, it's like very uh, hard prison and so on. So I tried to find information about some range well, who... who oh, who has um, some classification of the prison Russian Federation according to the prisoner term. And this is what I found. This information is about 2014, but I believe that if we're talking about 2022, this, the numbers are almost the same, plus minus few thousand. So it's not like, doesn't, it's, it's not this thing that we need to pay attention to. So if we're talking about the prisoners, the Russian Federation has nine, nine, around 9,000 prisoners whose prisoner term is less than a year. Around 7,000 prisoners whose prison term is about a year, one year. If we're talking about the prisoners who has term from one to three years, it's around 1,111,000 1, prisoners. So that's a lot, believe me, that's a lot. If we're talking about the prisoners who has the prisoner terms from three to five years, there are around 133,000 of prisoners. And now we're going to talk about the most tasty candidates and volunteers. The prisoners whose prisoner's term is from 5 till 10 years. 
there are around 224,000 of prisoners. And now the most interesting information. Those whose prisoners' terms is more than 10 years is around from... Let's, let's combine these numbers because I think that for these purposes to be the same people. Like the prisoners from 10 and more is around 100,000 soldiers. Sorry, prisoners, yes. For now, they're still prisoners. I try to understand how many of them are maybe will join or can join the Russian army if they want to do this. And I believe that they will and they will a lot. And I, try, I spoke with some sales managers just to understand how to convert this situation. And I talked with a very interesting sales manager. I uh, tried to like to, uh, to to measure this situation as if it was just a sales. It wasn't like a, a freedom. It was like small a car. And if you're selling a car you, and you have some database and you want to sell a car, what to do and how many customers I can rely on. So he told me that there is, of course, some classification. There is a cold leads, hot leads and so on. And he gave me some conversion rates. So I tried to build a small table trying to understand with the conversion rate uh, how many, uh, how, what is the Russian army might be if these or that people will sign a contract they will join um, to join this army. So if we're talking about uh, the soldiers, the prisoners who has less than a year, of course the conversion rate is very low because they, why do they need to join army and they will die there, we understand that. So I suppose that the conversion rate is very low. So as you can see, it's less than 1%. And as you can see, the result is maybe one person from 9,000 will join the army. It's like very low, maybe maybe a little bit more, but it's just a number. But I don't think that you have one less than one year prisoner term and you will run for army. If you're just a crazy, maybe in this case, you will do this. The same situation about the person who has one year the same even less than a person if we're talking about one till three years i have increased the conversion rate a little bit but anyway not more from 100,000 person prisoners i don't think that more than 100 will join the army because it's also like three years is nothing even in russian prison so i believe that no chance now we are talking about the prisoners from three to five years. That's that's already a lot. And if, if there are a lot of different uh, um, reasons why this person got into jail. So I have increased the rate, uh, conversion rate up to 1%. So from this conversion rate, I understand that from 133,000, maybe the Russian army will be like 1,000 prisoners can join and sign a contract. Not much, but it's more. Now we're talking about five to 10 years. And as according to that table, there are around 200,000 soldiers. And I have increased the conversion rate up to 3%. And I believe that this is the real conversion rate for this, uh, like for these people who has prisoner term from five to 10 years. And as you can see from like 200,000 soldiers, there are around 7,000 who can join the Russian army. And now we are talking about 10, 15 years. There are 67,000 and conversion rate, I put 10%. And believe me, my projection and my understanding that conversion rate is much higher than just 10%, much higher. I just put 10% because like, I don't want to risk and I don't want to speculate. But anyway, even in this case, we see that the uh, number of prisoners who can join is around 6,000. If we're talking 15% more, the, the, who has the prisoner term more than 50%, my, I believe that the conversion rate is more than 50%. Just imagine yourself to be in the prison for 15 years or to join the army. You, of course, there is a, high, there is a very high risk that you will be killed. But if you are able to survive for six months, then you will be free. If we are talking about the Russian prison, I don't have any statistic about the losses among prisoners who has the uh, prisoner term about 15 years how many of them survive till the end of their term maybe the conversion rate is even it is even higher but i put another 20 percent but i believe that the conversion rate rate is much higher so according to my calculation according to my understanding if the russians started 
starts the um, recruit campaign in uh, Russian prisons, they will be able to the minimum value of soldiers they will be able to recruit is around 20,000 soldiers. And that's a lot. Believe me, that's a lot. It's around 15 BTGs. The number will be higher, but it's the minimum value, I suppose. And now let's discuss another important topic about this situation. Let's return to our map, trying to understand uh, why the Russians decided to recruit prisoners. They have... Uh, they have the second, the third military corps. They have DPR forces, LPR forces. They are very well protected. They did regrouping. Why did they try? Started to recruit another another army. And the answer to this question was the same video with this hat of Wagner forces. He told one important thing. He told the second, the following. We are recruiting you, but you need to understand that we are searching for stormtroopers. This is the most important part. He told us, he said to, 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 told to these people that now they're recruiting stormtroopers. Stormtroopers, who is this guy? This is not artillery guys. This is not tank guys. This is not uh, aircraft guys. This is not IT guys. This is stormtroopers. The stormtroopers, those who is regular meat, you can push and force these guys to a storm Mariupol, Rubizhnoye, Severodonetsk, Liman. This is these towns was taken by the stormtroopers. But the question is, the Russians have changed their state and now they're in defense. Why do they start to? recruit stormtroopers i believe that the russians are planning and they will sooner or later start counteroffensive operation and for these purposes they need well well trained stormtroopers and not just stormtroopers they need to have a dead man's the dead man's and they need the situation when when nobody cares about those dead men's. They need a situation when even if they will be killed, they need a situation that nobody will even talk and they will say that that was the prisoners, that was the murderers. So this is their choice. And they did everything for their freedom. To obtain the freedom on the front line with their blood as it was in 1940s during the Second World War. But the question, we discussed that the number of the stormtroopers, the minimum number is about 20,000. That's a lot. With around 20,000 soldiers, the Russians took control over Mariupol. They stormed this town. 20,000, of course, is not enough of taking Kharkov. To take Kharkov, you need at least 100,000 of stormtroopers. But with help of 20,000, 20, you will be able to storm Slavansk, Kramatorsk easily. If you have 20,000 of stormtroopers, you will be able to storm Nikolaev easily. If you have 20,000 stormtroopers, you will be able to establish control over Radessa easily. The Russians are planning to recruit stormtroopers from prisons, to teach them, to give them everything they have. The next six months, the Russians will try to hold this situation. If they are able to develop their offensive operation near Bakhmut, as the Wagner force are doing right now, they will do this. Furthermore, today we got another important update from Krivoy Roh that the Russians attack. Take a look at the Russian sources map. The Russians attack another dam on the north from Krivoy Roh. Yesterday they destroyed the dam and now they destroy another dam on the same river. And some military Russian experts are saying that this is not just to slow down the Ukrainians. This, that was done maybe even with the purpose to start offensive operation from the Russian side because everything around Krivorih is under water and of course it slowed down the Ukrainians in this area and make their life not very happy so we'll see we'll see but I believe that upcoming year because even these prisoners need some time to be trained and they will be trained at least two three months so somewhere in three months we are going to see another situation in Ukraine. And that's it for today. 
military summary channel reminds that we condemn many violence in Ukraine. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye bye.